Okay, so we can call the Waitley Elementary School Committee meeting to order at 6.03 p.m. And the first order of business is the public hearing of the proposed FY23 budget. So, Shelly, do you want to take it away? Yeah, I just want to make sure we're talking about Waitley first because I know there's a request to review Frontier as well. Yes, Waitley first. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to start by talking a little bit about our budget process and then get into where we are at with the various drafts and then what we're presenting today for approval by the school committee. Um, so the original first steps of the budget is to look at uh, needs-based and student-centered, but also being fiscally responsible in the upcoming school year. Uh, so we gather input from key stakeholders, which includes uh, administrative staff, so the curriculum director, the technology director, facilities director, um, the principal, superintendent, and myself. Um, and then if there are folks beyond that, teachers or uh, anyone who's in charge of a particular program, those are gathered from those uh, administrative staff. So all of that comes into play in the first steps of this budget. Um, we take a hybrid approach to building it where we're looking at uh, level services, so not necessarily level funding, but level services, meaning we keep our existing staffing and programs in place, um, but then we also consider new needs and initiatives. Uh, so with our existing staffing and programs, um, we build in COLAs and step increases for anyone with a contract, so any of our union, our teachers, or our IAs. And then we also look at administrative staff and support staff, custodians, uh, cafeteria, office staff, anyone else who does support that's not on an actual contract. And we put in a placeholder for a cost of living adjustment for a raise. And then uh, we take a look at prior year expenses. So I look back historically at the last two to three years to see where we've had fluctuations of going over budget or being way under budget. And we make adjustments based on those numbers. So that's really our starting point is to look at all of those pieces first, like the existing programs and staffing to provide level services. Uh, and then from there, we want to look at new initiatives. So uh, Chrissy and I have conversations about new needs for the school, whether that's supplies, materials, equipment, new staffing, uh, whatever those pieces are, those get factored into the first draft. And then the final step is to look at other budget drivers. So things that are out of our control, like our revolving funds. So if we've had a fluctuation in our revolving fund revenue or expenditures, we take a look at those to make sure that those funds can continue to carry the expenses year to year. Um, our revolving funds include early childhood and school choice and school lunch in Waitley. And then we also consider special education expenses. Again, those are things that are sort of out of our controls, transportation costs, sending students out of district, um, bringing in con consultants or contractors to provide special education services. Those are things that we have to provide our community uh, and the prices and costs vary year to year. So those pieces are looked at as well. So in that first draft, after taking all of that into consideration, we came in with an 8.33% increase over the prior year. We knew that that wasn't a number that we were going to be able to move forward with, but we wanted school committee to see what the whole picture would look like if we did present all of the wants and needs. Um, the increase was primarily funded by wages. So there was about $100,000 in wages added to the budget. 80000 of that was due to a shift off of school choice. So we were paying for um, the speech position which is a faculty position on the teacher contract, that has historically and lately been paid from the school choice fund. Projecting ahead to look at the school choice numbers, our revolving fund account is dwindling. Um, part of that has to do with we've increased expenses over the years or enrollment may have fluctuated, so we've seen a decrease. Um, so we need to start to shift our mindset so that we're not fully depleting that account. We should have 
uh, best practice of keeping one year rears in uh, revenue in that account for unforeseen expenditures. And we were getting a little close to that number. So we moved $80,000 in wages off of choice. The other 20,000 accounted for an increase in the PE and OT positions, which are also both faculty positions. Um, they're both part-time. So Chrissy had a desire based on a student need to increase OT support, occupational therapy, and then our physical education programming to add another day of PE in for students. So that was about $20,000 to bring those teachers up. Um, they wouldn't, they still weren't gonna be full-time FTEs, uh, but it was bringing, I think, OT from 0.6 to 0.8 and possibly the same thing with um, PE. Another uh, big factor there was an out of district placement increase. So we have a student who in the current year needed to be placed out of district. Uh, we paid for that this year because it was unbudgeted. We paid for it with school choice funds that we had saved from last year. Our numbers ended up being higher at the end of the year. Um, but moving forward, again, same scenario as I just talked about previously about that salary, uh, we want to keep an eye on our revolving fund balance and choice. So when we presented the first budget, we moved that expenditure off of choice and onto the general fund so that we could see what those numbers looked like. So, you know, 80 and 35, those are pretty significant numbers that were paid from a revolving fund previously that we were dumping onto choice to begin or onto general fund to begin the budget process. There aren't a lot of new initiatives here. Um, as you can see, 20,000 in wages is not a whole lot of extra programming or staffing for the school. So we really in Waitley are primarily looking at level of service funding for the next year. <clears throat> so school committee asked administration to go back to the drawing board, come up with the next meeting, a new draft. Uh, so we did make some reductions and move some funds around and we presented on February 8th, a budget of 3.22%. Uh, just shy of a $60,000 increase. Uh, we did eliminate the PE and the OT support that was added. Um, and while Chrissy prioritizes those as needs in the future, and, and it may come up again next year, uh, there were other factors besides the budget that had us pull those off, one of which was staffing. Um, so I believe the, the occupational therapist actually couldn't take on another day in Waitley because of another commitment at another school. Um, and the same might have been the, the, with the PE teacher. So it worked out that we couldn't afford this in the end anyway due to staffing reasons. Um, and then our only other option was to reconsider our revolving fund, particularly our school choice account. Uh, and we made a decision to move 47,000 of what we had moved off originally back onto that revolving fund for next year. Um, from there, we looked closely at our expense lines. There's not a lot of wiggle room in the budget. You know, Waitley doesn't have uh, accounts that are overinflated that we're not spending year to year. However, we did make a reduction in the facilities expense line. Uh, and that is because for many years before my time, and I think Bob can definitely speak to this, probably Maureen as well, there was an account set up in the budget for um, Christian Lane Central Office, and then there was a facilities line as well in Waitley. And when Central Office moved over to this building at Frontier, those lines were consolidated because the funds were already in the budget. Uh, I looked back historically, we haven't needed uh, the, the total fund or the total line item was about 41,000. We haven't needed that for emergency facilities repairs or regular building maintenance in some time. We have used the funds for various facilities needs because it was built in. For instance, last year, um, I think we did some extra painting, uh, perhaps the light poles out in the parking lot. We did some painting on those. Um, we bought some furniture for the offices that hadn't re been replaced in a very, very long time. So we have used those funds. However, they've not been used in the way that a, a facilities building's general repairs line would be used. So in order to reduce the budget, we made the decision to recommend to school committee to decrease that line by 20000 So that's the summary of where we get to uh, the 3.22 from 8.33. And that is the draft that we are presenting this evening to school committee for um, approval to move forward to the town. 
And then also a note, Waitley uses an additional $444,000 of school choice and revolving fund revenue to fully fund the total operating budget. So the school's total operating budget is just over 2.3 million. Um, what else do I have to show you? Oh, some historical information. Uh, so last year we came in at a 2.5% increase. The prior year uh, was a 0%. Um, that year, we did not make any cuts to the budget. That was in the peak of COVID, not knowing what was going to happen with Chapter 70. Um, we went in with a 0% increase. However, we didn't change programs or staffing. So all it meant was that whatever inflation and increase we were going to have had to be paid from other funding sources. So we did have some COVID grant revenue that we used. Um, and we did use some of our school choice funds that year to help offset and make sure that we went in with a zero increase. FY20 uh, was the year before I started here. And if I remember correctly, please um, correct me if I'm wrong, but if I remember right, that 6.18% was similar to what I'm talking about right now, where school choice funds were being depleted and the school committee had to make some decisions to save some school choice funds for future emergency use. And so there was a significant increase to the budget that year. Um, thankfully, we're not going as dramatic right now, but, you know, we are going to have to continue to work on that. While school choice is not going down, you know, our enrollment this year is up a couple of kids over the prior year. It's one of those things that fluctuates and we really should be keeping one year prior year revenue as a reserve for us moving forward. So some historical info there and then uh, enrollment data, just so you can see historically what that looks like. Uh, so we are up in enrollment. Uh, you can see we're up a couple of kids on choice and a couple of kids in district. Uh, so that's positive news for Waitley. And then uh, revolving fund projections. So this is looking ahead to next year based on the current year's data as well as budgets for next year. So early childhood and school lunch we supported in this current year with ESSER funding. Uh, so that those programs could build up their reserves again because their reserves were nearly depleted in FY21 with COVID. So what we've done is taken expenditures off of early childhood and school lunch, used the grant so that in future years we have a healthy balance again. So we are looking to overspend next year in the early childhood account. You're going to see that's a recurring theme through our revolving funds. However, thirty to 50000 for a small early childhood program is a really healthy revolving fund balance just to have some reserves for any emergencies that come up, which would primarily in early childhood be special education and early intervention related. And then our um, school lunch account, so same theme here. We saved up our reserves. We're going into next year with a really positive balance. Um, we're anticipating about 70000 in revenue. The caveat with school lunch is that we do not yet know if school lunch is going to be um, free for everyone again moving forward into the new year. The USDA has not decided that, so there could be a shift in our revenue sources. Um, but I do feel pretty confident in that number, even based on what students were paying previously. Um, our expenses are exceeding. Again, we're moving those salaries back on off of the grant. The grant no longer is available, so we have to fund those salaries again. But repeat here, small school lunch program, 50000 is a good reserve to have. It gives us an opportunity to start to look at um, is there more equipment that needs to be replaced, even if it's smaller things, dishes, silverware, that kind of thing. Um, we can start to use some of that if we have a good reserve balance. And then our school choice fund. Uh, so we're starting off, the projection for next year is about 216000 Our revenue projection is based on the current year's number because that's how they do the cherry sheets um, and what our, our starting enrollment number will be for revenue. Our expenses are exceeding our revenue, which is eating into our balance. So we are going to have less of a reserve than one year of revenue. However, 160 to 200,000, I feel is still, you know, a good amount for the district. And I don't think we want to get any lower than 150,000 in that account. You know, it, it's easy um, if we have one unknown out of district placement that comes up for that money to really quickly be used up. 
Um, and the other one thing I will say about the out-of-district placement that we do have this year is we are fortunate that the family is able to provide the student with transportation. And so we're reimbursing at a much lower rate than we would be if we were having a higher JV transportation or GRIBCO to come in and, and provide transportation for that student. Um, that out-of-district placement cost would be significantly higher and this balance would be much lower. Um, the other thing I will make a note about school choice and about that student um, for the out-of-district placement is that I believe that this is the final year that the student would be enrolled, that they would age out of Wheatley Elementary in the following school year. So we would see that money that we're keeping on choice to pay the out-of-district placement come back um, and see a reduction in our expenditures in the following year, FY24. So I know I've just blurted out a lot of information and sort of went quickly. So I'm happy to take questions. Um, and Paul, I know you did send over a list of things. If I didn't address anything uh, or if there are other questions, I'm happy to take them. Okay, the man has a question. I don't know if I have to click anything or if Brian can just go. I think I can talk, right? You can hear me? Yeah. Actually, I was just wondering um, if if you don't mind, um, um, who else from the, I just wanna see who else from the finance committee is on here for, for meeting minute purposes, because there's a couple of people on phone numbers. Can I just read off the, read off the members quickly and see if they're here? Is that okay? All right, so I know I have uh, Tom, Deborah, Patty, Paul. Is Jim here? Yes, my phone. Okay, Jim's here. Is Dan here? Dan's not here, and Donna is here? Ooh, I thought she was. No, okay. Maybe they're using the uh, the link on YouTube or uh, the other link. Okay. Thank you. I'll have questions later. Thanks. I'm here too, Brian. This is Brent. I'm on my laptop. Maybe you can see me. But anyway, Brent is here too. Yep, I got you. Okay, I see Paul has his hand up. Go ahead, Paul. And you're muted. Ed. Oh, you're on mute. There you go. Sorry. Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Hello. All right. All right. I'm getting hang of this. It's uh, taking me a few meetings, but I'm I'm getting down the road. Okay. Um, I got a few. I've got a few questions. Uh, Shelly, thanks for answering a few of them. Um, but um, can you just educate me and us uh, as to um, the superintendent's office? Um, I noticed that on Waitley we have um, like a 9.6% increase, um, but yet when I go to Frontier, it's uh, you have a negative. I um, mean, it's it's less money. So, kind of give us a little sense of how that happens. Yeah. So the reason that there are differences there is because of the cost share percentage. So anyone that's in central office. Um, superintendent's office, business office, IT, facilities, uh, some curriculum pieces. So those are split depending on the position, like Darius's, for example, is split between the five schools. Mm -hmm. So that is based on enrollment and it's based on overall enrollment when it comes to the cost share percentage. So Waitley has seen an increase in the cost share for the elementary school and for the high school and middle school. The number has grown in both regards. So the yes. net increase uh, to Waitley is a 0.86, or I'm sorry, 0.68% increase. So almost three quarters of a percent on the cost share. So anything that's central office related on the Waitley budget, you're gonna see automatically go up. On the frontier budget, 
You see it go down because those numbers are based on Frontier's cost share percentage because that's the presentation that we make to the Frontier School Committee. So overall, Frontier's numbers decreased. So the five-way split, they actually see a reduction and it's a pretty significant reduction, which is why if you look at and Frontier's mm -hmm. budget, superintendent, you don't see it on business office and I can explain to you why you don't see it there, but you also see it on the SPED director, IT, and facilities, there's a decrease on all of those lines because Frontier right. share went down. Right. Um, so the same thing happens with the business and finance. Um, so I'm just wondering why it is that the finance committees don't receive the whole budget. Why we can't see, in, in with respect to Frontier, with respect to the Frontier budget, why we can't look at exactly what's going on in the superintendent's office and why we can't look at what's going on in business and finance totally, not just our piece of it. Is there any reason why that does not happen? I'm not exactly sure what you're looking to see. I want to see the budget before it's broken out into each town. And I would think each town should get that from the frontier side, from the frontier. Now, I know we're talking about Waitley and I'm getting off track here, but let's keep that. Let's put that aside for the set for a second and I'll just get back to Waitley things. Okay. okay. Um, can you tell me exactly what the teacher classroom salary increase is? So again, we had no increase in positions. What you're seeing on the budget increase in my computer is just going a little bit slow, which is why I'm not okay. giving you an exact number yet, but um, you're only seeing the COLA adjustments or step changes for existing staff. We did okay. not add any faculty. Um, and I can tell you if this will. Um, so when you're looking at the budget also, Paul, I will say that I, I don't know if you're looking at a specific function code and questioning something, but our faculty aren't just labeled as teachers. So there's a lot of folks that fall under this contract that are coded under something other than teacher. Oh, I see. So it's our guidance counselors, it's school psychologists, if we have them, it's librarians, it's our nurses, it's anyone that falls under the teacher contract. They're just broken out into different right. codes. So it's a little bit hard to gotcha. um, for you to see without adding up all those categories what the total increase was. But okay. our, overall, um, the faculty is seeing about a $50,000 increase in wages amongst everyone who works in the school that falls under that teacher contract. Okay, so what kind of percentage was agreed upon during the uh, negotiations? So I actually don't know if I can comment on that yet because yeah. it is not voted it on. It ratified by okay. the association. We have come to a we have come to a tentative agreement or waiting on ratification. Okay. If and don't forget when we, oh, sorry, Bob, were you talking? I was just going to say one more thing about um, the increases for our, our teachers, that it's not just a COLA. So if we agreed on 1%, a lot of those faculty are also stepping. And the step increase adds an additional percentage. It's, it's typically about 3.5% in that step. So if right. we settle on one, they're getting 45 which causes the inflation on the overall increase. I got you on that. Um, just, um, just tell me where I'm wrong here, because I, I know I'm losing something. But when I look at teacher classroom salaries for Waitley Elementary School, on the sheet that you, on the budget you sent me last week, um, that's what I'm using. Okay, so I'm looking at um, accounts under 2305. Yep. And, uh, and under that, and under that grouping, we have salaries, classroom teachers, 
SPED teachers, kindergarten teachers, art, music, uh, phys ed, EC teachers, and salary SPED sub separate teachers. So we have that group. Now, these are the numbers. These are the real numbers. These are the, according to this sheet, total expenses for the coming year is 895581. And what was agreed upon, the budget from last year that was passed on town floor, is 718973. Now, if you go from 718 to 895, you're in about a 24% increase. So those to me, that looks to me like real, that's real dollars. And I, I understand that some of it comes from school of choice and some of it comes from early childhood and um, et cetera. There are different buckets and pools that group together to pay this off. But why is it that those numbers don't add up to, well, you know, whatever the percentage is going to be. I know it's not agreed upon yet, but those are the numbers that are on this sheet. They so, are. So one of the pieces that I think you're missing is when you're comparing the 718 to the 859 or 895 is you're not also lumping in the revolving funds from last year that were used. So you have to add the 718 to last year's revolving fund number to compare that to the 895 at the end. And you don't have that in front of you right now. Um, okay. So, it, you know, you're not comparing apples to apples the way that you're seeing it. Apparently not. Um, so again, it's a little bit of a little bit of uh, data missing from this type of a sheet in order for someone to do, uh, you know, a little in-depth analysis of um, one year to the next. So, okay. And I uh, can tell you that last year the total was uh, 855 and this year it's 895. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and let me see. Um, just things that stand out to me. Um, we well, talked about the out of town. Um, now the SPED director is, is that a shared service? Yes, it is. Okay. All right. And, um, uh, that, okay, fine. Um, and could anyone speak to, um, why we had such an increase in the nurse's salary? Um, I'm happy to keep talking unless someone else wants to take it, but we have a nurse leader position within the district that is also a cost share position because it is split five ways amongst all five schools. Okay. Next year, that position is fully paid by the five school budget. Up to this point, including the current year, it has been grant funded and we had three years to move that position off of the grant and onto um, school funds and that's slowly what we've been doing. Uh, the elementary school and Frontier pay a small portion of that uh, salary this year. Next year, it's the full salary split the five ways. So it is a significant jump for all five schools across the okay. district. Alrighty. Um, I guess that's it. That's it for me. Thank you very much. Uh, Does anybody else have any questions? And I can't see everybody's. So if anyone sees a hand up, let um, Okay, Brian. Go ahead, Brian. Hi. <clears throat> I'm not sure who this is a question to, but it, it's crossed my mind recently with all the events that have been happening. Are you guys comfortable with your your numbers? For example, I guess this is to Shelly. You, your numbers for heat and your numbers for you know electricity if we expect the prices to continue to go up. Mm. And if we continue to see increases like this, do you have sort of a a backup fund where you could pay these really, really high energy prices if you needed to? Not that I want you to add money to your budget. But. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I haven't looked very closely at, um, you know, the, the current heating rates 
um, yeah. and made any projections moving forward to what that will look like. But I can tell you that there is typically a little bit of wiggle room in that budget. We don't fully spend that line every year. So I do feel okay with, with where we're at. And we have the 160,000 planned reserves and school choice funds that we could dip into if we needed to. Um, there's also generally some fluctuation within the budget year to year. A couple examples, maybe we don't use as many substitutes as we budget for, and that allows for some overages in lines. Um, and then IAs, we generally see a little bit of savings. Um, sometimes they run out of sick time, so they have to take unpaid days. So that helps us account for overages in certain accounts. Um, another example that comes up, although not at Waitley so frequently because they are a smaller staff, but if we have someone go out on leave of absence and they don't have a paid leave, you know, maybe they're taking a personal leave, that kind of thing. So typically I have existing accounts that I can sort of move funds around if we need to for those overages. Hi, um, I'm Patty. <laughs> I have, uh, my, my job is as a cost engineer, as all of you know. Um, my question comes um, as you move forward with everything, it, you know, the, the cost with the um, fuel and everything has become really crazy in the last week. Um, how, have you actually taken that into account? out for your things that have, you know, that have petroleum-based petroleum products? Really sure. I mean, I realize it's, it's, it's kind of a hard thing because we're, we're only dealing with the last week, yeah. um, but it's kind of a tough thing. I, I think I think you just answered the question right there. So we did, started developing this budget in December. We were not considering about an invasion of an Eastern European country. And a I, I guess what so. I'm asking is, is there contingency in the plan? So no, we don't. Our contingency is if fuel prices are to spike. We do have. We would have to be shifting things, and we would have to make adjustments mid-year. Depending on the level of shifting of of, of, of funds uh, or of the price of, of uh, natural gas or oil, or whatever we're running off at that time, we then would have to make adjustments in our budget, including not you know, we'd look at whatever services we're providing and um, try to find where we could cut, where we could okay. reduce spending. Um, we'd also have to look at our school choice line, and maybe we'd have to tip into that a little bit more than we're you know normally comfortable with, but. Um, you know, we do like, as Shelly just said, there is some padding in the fuel line. When I say padding, you know, a few, a few grand here, a few grand there, um, you know, in some years it goes higher, some years it goes lower, you know, so it's going to be something we'll have to watch, but, you know, right now to ask for me to meet your reaction and ask the committee to put another percentile or another $10,000 into fuel and raise that, you know, to, you know, three point, three point six. What I'm asking uh, for yeah. is, is for the finance committee to realize that, uh, you know, we're in a really volatile situation and anything that you guys present to us is in flux. That's, I'm not asking you to, you guys, well, okay, I did that, but I'm not asking you to present anything other than, you know, to realize that everything right now is up in the air. Okay. Uh, Brian, you have a question? Yeah. Um, thanks. Um, I just wanted to possibly clarify what, what Paul was asking initially. Um, and Paul, you can tell me if I'm wrong, but um, for instance, like, I guess this is for Shelly. So, so there's a, there's a, a code 1210 superintendent, right? And we'll pick on Darius, but it's what I saw first. It's 1210, right? Superintendent. Um, and I think you told us that Waitley Elementary School pays a percentage 
of um, uh, is it line item or is it a percentage of it's a, it's a percentage of the line item, right? Correct. It's a percentage of like um, 101, 113, 210, Correct. the numbers at the end, right? So yep. I, I think Paul's question was so presumably there's a um, salary superintendent receptionist budget, right? A total amount. And then that gets broken out to the five to the five different places, right? I think that's what Paul was asking was it does that budget exist somewhere and is it possible to see it? Is that right, Paul? Is that what you're thinking about? Um, that's exactly right. I know darn well it has to exist because there's no way you can divide by five if you don't have that to begin with. So, so it has to exist. It has to exist for everything that um, um, that we share. I mean, it, it just does. Of course, it does. There's there's five individual budget workbooks that I that I build with, um, and I do not have one sheet that says. Darius's salary and then the five costs. I will share my screen with you and show you as an example how complex this is. Um, I don't know uh, if anyone wants this full workbook or not. I don't see any reason to not share it. It is incredibly complicated and this is not a simple process. So I hope people understand that. Um, what am I in? I'm in the wrong one. I had 22 up. I want to show you 23. There we go. All right. Can you see that? I don't know how small it is. So you can see the first column shows the account code. Um, and then it has each individual's name, their title, their hire date, their hours per day, their days per year. And then I look from there at, I have some columns hidden here to make it easier for me to look at every day. Um, but you can see there's the FY20 salary, the 21 salary, and then it goes on to 22 and 23. So then there's a you know prorated amount that each school um pays. And so there's formulas within all of these. And if you look at the formula up here, it tells you the full salary times the cost share percentage. So it all exists. Um, we don't generally, at least in my tenure here, um, share out this entire Excel workbook. You know, there's a tab for every faculty member. There's a tab for the salary schedule. Um, I go through the same process. I go through it with IAs. Um, we have our school staff, our school lunch staff, facilities, you know, so on and so forth all the way through. Um, and then the cost share percentage sheet is also in here. So uh, I can show you exactly what that looks like. Um, so we look at the Union 38 enrollment, the regional enrollment, the total enrollment, and then we build the cost share percentage based on those enrollments numbers. So yes. Absolutely, this all exists. I'm, I don't know if it's digestible um, without sitting down for a chit chat, which, you know, if that's what we need to do, that's what we need to do. Um, as someone who is looking at the finances for the town of Waitley, um, and we pay a percentage of a certain bill, and this is a big bill. Schools are 56% of our budget. And I just think that not only myself, but I, I, think the, I think the frontier community in general feels that there is some way uh, that, there is a, that, that there is a total sheet like this one, like the one you sent me, Shelly, that is just broken down by the percentages owed by each town. And, and but apparently that's that does not exist except except in that very large very complicated um, spreadsheet that you have in front of you so that's but I I, I think every, every, every well I can't say everyone but a great number of people are under the impression that there is a total budget 
especially when it comes to Frontier or when it comes to shared services of the four towns, that there is a total budget and that is in black and white somewhere. But um, I guess I'm wrong. So, um, Brian, is is that... Did you have that feeling yourself? Um, no, Brian's there. But no, I'm I'm here. Um, I I think I understand Shelley's spreadsheets. I think they're really complicated. But um, so I, I mean, I I think I understand what's going on. The the formulas in terms of how they're broken out are is that laid out in the superintendency union is it the union agreement um in terms of how it's broken out among the five districts where does that formula live or, or how is that determined or is that or is that uh, uh some type of cmr or something darius does the regional agreement talk about the cost share percentage Correct. It's in the regional agreement how the cost share percentage is broken out. And then, yeah, as far as assessment data, that is determined by the state. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and if, if you're looking to see, it sounds like, Paul, you're saying anything that is split between, and there's things that are only split between the four schools, and there are things that are split between the five schools. Right. So it sounds like you would like to see at some point anything that's cost shared what the breakdown is by town well yeah i mean just to just to make things simple for myself um let's say we're all sharing um 150 dollars worth of costs and we all shared it equally and there are five schools so it's 150 divided by five but somewhere there's a sheet with that $150 on it so that as the finance committee, we can now look at that $150 and say, oh, yeah, this is what we should be paying. Yeah, th this this lines up. This makes sense um, because it's right now it's quite con convoluted and, and it has been forever and ever. And it, this isn't new. It's just it's just the way it is. And if. The fact of the matter is that we can't get that kind of a document, then I guess we can't. So, um, but that's, I'm not going to beat a dead horse here. That it, it was something that, that came up in conversations and um, I thought I would try to tease it out a little bit and um, that's where we are. Okay. Maureen, I don't know if you can see, but it looks like um, Bob and Joyce have their hands up. I'll let Joyce yes. go first. Okay, go ahead, Joyce. Um, thanks. Um, I guess I'm a little puzzled. I thought that um, Ms. Shante asked for something reasonable. I thought Shelly actually offered to show that big spreadsheet to anybody who wants it. Am I reading that wrong? So, yes, Paul, that information is available for you. I'm sorry, I get the, the sound went off funny there. Um, my understanding is basically they said, yes, you can have that information, and here it is in the spreadsheet. So, I, I just want to make sure that I understood that because it's. Yeah, can, can we mute um, Dan Kennedy, please? Because his is... Um, I'll shut my radio off. Keep going. Okay. Um, I guess I, I'm, I'm wondering if, if Paul is feeling like he's walking away without getting his question answered or getting the information he's asked for, it sounds like they're actually very open to giving you the information. Or maybe I'm not hearing this right. Maybe Shelly has not actually offered to share that spreadsheet with us. Uh, Paul, you're muted. Um, yeah, no, I... You know, I, Joyce, there's no question that uh, that the information exists, and Shelley did put it up on the screen and did offer 
whomever would like to look at it to take a look at it. Um, but it's, but it, once again, it's not a cut and dry document. Even she herself said that you really have to get into the weeds with this thing to tease it out, to see, you know, compare the apples to apples. And I was under the impression, and I think many people were under the impression, that there was a simple, a simpler document, very much like the budget sheets that are sent out, and that it would be like this, except, you know, with all costs from all five, from all five cost centers um, collated into one spot. And that appa that apparently is does not exist. So I think as we move forward in this conversation, whether or not we take this up again next year, then that's the kind of um, that's the kind of information that maybe we can get from Shelley in um, in a in a more simpler form. So I just want to maybe clarify, and it might be for my own purposes here that you are getting the information that you need. What you're not seeing, it, you know, in the Waitley budget and in the Frontier budget, you do see what portion Waitley Elementary pays of, let's keep talking about Darius, sorry, Darius, Darius's salary. So Waitley pays $15,415 of Darius's salary. That's really clear yep. in the budget workbook. Right. What you don't see is if Darius's whole salary is a hundred thousand, you don't see Conway pays this, Deerfield pays this, Sunderland pays this. Exactly. Which we don't, we haven't produced, to my knowledge. But why would at we, any point? Why, Shelley, to cut you off there, why would we produce that? Why would we go and do the math on my hundred thousand dollars when you can see the percentage of each town and what they have to pay for it? So that everybody can do the math. You can look at all the other budgets, but we got to create a special budget that compares the costs of the breakout of each town when it's a percentage. I mean, I guess we could. I'm, I'm also wondering what's the, and I guess, Paul, and I guess this is an honest conversation here, is what's the role of the finance committee of the school budget in the, in the lines of the school budget? Because the school budget, my understanding, and, and I, I really am looking, because this is the only conversation I've had like this in my four years of superintendent and sitting on um, and multiple before that within this district, where the question of, I mean, there's been questions about certain lines and that kind of stuff, but wanting, there's this feeling like we're not being transparent in the budget. Okay, that we're, I don't know what the message you're trying to say. You know, you kind of said that at the Frontier meeting the other night that the Frontier Committee wasn't pushing back enough on the administration. And so I guess what I'm I guess what I'm asking here within the my first question is what is the town's so that we have an understanding of where the governance of a elected body of a school committee whose job is to come up with the budget, make the budget recommendation to the town. Whether or not the finance committee agrees with it or not, they can make a budget number to the town. They should work together, but th but that is the role of the school committee. That's how it's it's set up. So mm -hmm. if you have a disagreement with lines within the budget, you know, should each finance committee going go be go be going line by line through <coughs> each school budget? And if they are, that is our our system is not set up properly for that. I'm going to have to hire a couple of assistant business directors to be able to sit down with people in, you know, because it, it, it is complicated. And it's complicated that she has to do it five times. It's almost crazy that she has to do it five times. So mm -hmm. I, I'm kind of like, there's a part of me that's being defensive because the amount of work <laughs> to spell out something, and I'm not even sure what we're spelling out. Um, just, clear, let me just you have a question, we'll answer the question, but it's kind of like, just, mm -hmm. just present it in a different way for what purpose? My only question was, and I don't want to make it defensive about this. Um, this not is this. Don't take this as an attack. Um, this is simply a question coming from a simplistic look at a very complicated budget, and that simplistic view is really came about because 
the feeling was that there was a budget. Let's just take the superintendent's office just in and of itself. That somewhere there is a superintendent's office budget that exists, just like with all the line items in 1210, with all those line items and every, all those expenses. And then all those expenses are presented to a school committee. And that school committee is the Frontier Regional School Committee and the subcommittee there. Um, and then it's the responsibility of that school committee to discuss that budget with the superintendent in the superintendent's office. So that number that comes out of the superintendent, the, the, the discussion, the back and forth, that number is then broken up into the five various, the four towns as well as front, frontier. And my only question was, does there exist, does that document exist that shows the agreement that was come, the, the, the number that came out of that process? And it's in Shelley's um, spreadsheet, but it's not as straightforward and cut and dry as I thought it might be. And I think a lot of other people think that it probably is, but it is not. So, do I need to see it? Is it is it a critical mass thing? No, but we haven't seen it in the past, and we've passed the budgets. But we are in a year where Waitley is taking a shot um, with an increase, and I think it's important that we look under various covers and various spots where we may not have knowledge of where certain costs are coming from. And that's where that comes from. So let me kind of, I, I'm think I'm, I think I'm hearing what you're saying when it applies to the superintendent's office, because you're telling me that you're seeing the broken down numbers, not the total numbers. Right. Because with the regular, the Waitley budget itself is pretty self, you know, the principal's office costs the principal's office. You see all those numbers within the right. workbook we provided right. you, correct? Right. And then in the workbook we provided you regarding central office, you're just seeing your breakdown of it, not the total cost. Is that so? If you'd like to see a total cost line item put mm -hmm. into that, is that what you're saying? Yes. I think we can do that. That that shouldn't be a problem, right? Shall you? I mean, right. We could have, if I'm looking at the, the workbook. You know, and you have description and then F20, you know, the, the general budget, the whatever budget, you could have total cost of line item, right? Mm -hmm. For a central office, Shelly? Yes, I do not have that currently. There are five we can create individual that in the budgets. We can create it. But again, what what's the purpose of it? But we just keep going round and round. So. But people can see, I understand, I, I am kind of seeing like when you look at my salary, on the cost year, you actually don't know what my salary is. Nobody does. Right. Well, the paper reported it. But the, yes, but I understand what you're saying. You know what I mean? In the sense of that there's no yeah. full, full title line. So they're paying a percentage. They don't know what the full percentage they're paying of, of that line. That I, makes sense with central office. It just didn't make sense when you're talking about the budget as a whole. But the central office cost breakdown is broken down after. Does that make sense, Shelly? Okay. Thank you. Okay, I don't see any other hands up. So, oh, Dan. I, I just want to, to go along with what this discussion that's been happening. We are not trying to micromanage. It is just the total numbers that we want to see and our share of the breakdown of that. It's not micromanaging back to, like you were describing, to the first committees that meet and come up with it. So we're not getting into that. It's just the, the big numbers. Right. Just, just, just let me cap this off by saying, and we all know this, by statute, the Finance Committee 
is responsible for putting a budget together and recommending to the town that this budget is clear, this budget is transparent, and this budget is going to work for the people of the town. Now, when I get up on town floor and tell them that, I think I have every right to ask any question of any public person, of any public dollar. And that's what I do. And, and I want to thank you all for putting up with these questions. So thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Um, does anyone else have any questions? Maureen? Yes. Maureen, does, does Paul have any questions about Frontier before we... Does he have any yeah. questions about Frontier? Bob, you know, before we jump over to Frontier, I know Maureen's on a mobile device because she wants to get to a game that started 10, 15 minutes ago. Um, so I guess my only question is, the finance committee, you see the number, you know, we were asked to hold this meeting prior to the voting of that number, which we did. Is there any feedback on the number itself um, on what you've seen tonight? So that um, I think what you, the school committee should do is next is they're going to vote that number so that Maureen can go to her game, her child's game. Because that's the only real business on the, in the agenda. Time. If you want to do that, Maureen, I don't mean to step in your toes this chair, but I think sometimes. Yeah. I know you'll miss the whole game if you get sucked in here, and I know that it's important to you to see the term again. So you're you're saying if we're all done talking about the weekly budget, then we can have our vote now, and then then they can ask their questions about Frontier. It's the only right. Then we can go into yeah. the long discussion there, and it is the only vote on the uh, yeah. you know, to move that motion forward and discuss that. I think that would make sense. Okay. Yep, I'm fine with that. Um, Paul, are you happy with the increase? Um, yeah, it's just unfortunate that the, the state assessment is the way it is. There's nothing we can do about that. So, you know, we're just, we're, we're, we will go forward. You know? I mean, we have been in the last four or five years, we have had either level, level funding or two and a half. We had one year of 6.18. And I remember that year was either cut somebody that needed a, that person's service in half or or not. And we kept it at the higher amount. And I think you were backing us because we explained what it was at that time. Right. Um, yeah. if, if the finance committee doesn't have any other questions, I like to move the, the que uh, move the vote for the new budget. And Shelly, can you. Can you give us that 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 number, please, in my motion? Yep, one million eight hundred eighty-eight dollars six hundred. No, one million eight hundred eighty-eight thousand six hundred eighty-four dollars. One eight 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 six eight four. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Roll call. Yes. Beth. Yes. Maureen, yes. Okay, so that passes. And I am going to turn the meeting over to Bob. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Darius. Thank you, everybody. I'm going to go now. Take Thanks, care, Mary. Maureen. Okay, bye. Darius, should we just continue right on to Frontier and, and talk about Frontier before we do anything else? Yeah, I, uh, the uh, finance committee asked if we do a, uh, I don't know if they asked for a brief overview, but I think we'll do a brief overview of the frontier so they can ask their questions mostly regarding, uh, you know, why there's such a significant increase this year um, and such. So, Shelly, you want to give the overview, but kind of, I just go right to the, go right to the final numbers of where we're at. Yeah, know, I'm, I'm not even going to share or go through the whole thing. Um, we are at... Uh, 3.64% for an overall increase of $430,000 roughly. Um, so the total budget is just over 12.2 million and then we'll use about another million dollars in uh, school choice and revolving fund revenue. 
so the increase is um, primarily related to uh, normal adjustments. Uh, so the cost of living, contract increases, step changes, uh, those things that I talked about with the Waitley budget that we look at for various factors. Um, and then uh, we had some changes in various accounts. So our technology line was underfunded for several years due to technology needs. So we had to have an increase in that. Um, we're seeing an increase in transportation costs for special education, significant increase, significant increase in our out of district placements. Um, we have additional retirements next year for Frontier that increased our separation costs. Our Franklin Regional Retirement Assessment is up by 20,000. Um, the nurse leader position that we talked about for Waitley, that's also having a significant increase at Frontier because Frontier carries the highest um, percentage of that five uh, school share cost percentage. Um, and then we are losing some circuit breaker reimbursement funds. So we had to move some uh, IA positions around onto budget. So a lot of it is uh, wage driven, uh, majority of that increase. Um, and that the 400,000 is down from our original amount, um, which we started off about 5.72%, I believe. Um, and we're ending up at 3.64. Um, so what does that mean for Waitley? So again, the it's based on enrollment percentage. So there is a five-year rolling enrollment uh, that we consider for the assessment. So Waitley seeing an increase in Frontier's en en enrollment from the town. Um, and then the Chapter 70 formula comes into play as well. So there is about a $71,000 increase from the prior year in the Chapter 70 formula alone. Mm -hmm. Again, that's partially based on enrollment, which the state is showing a five student increase in enrollment for Chapter 70 calculations. And then it's also based on the town's wealth. Um, so property values um, and income of your residents, as well as other tax revenue and those kind of things for the for the town. So um, the assessment is pretty significant this year for Waitley. It is an increase of 14.36% over the prior year, uh, just shy of $132,000. That was a brief recap. Did I miss anything? Uh, Bill Darius specific to Waitley. And then, Paul, I know you did send in a bunch of questions. Yeah, I think it's, um, it's Waitley's turn this year to, to, to endure the increase, and we can, we'll, we'll briefly have the discussion that we all know will never pass, that the regional agreement ought to be changed to go strictly by enrollment rather than this busy formula that the state of Massachusetts used to take it. But you're never going to get four pounds to pass this because there's a winner and a loser every year. Sometimes there's two winners and two losers. You know, so it's it's a we go we have this discussion every year about we should we ought to change that. Who's gonna if you if you gain it like last year when, when Waitley was way ahead of the game, were they vote to change it? No. Nope. Nope. We vote to change it. You betcha. So what do you do? So some of your questions, uh, Paul, I think I did answer in the midst of the conversation. One of your questions was regarding the decrease in some of the expenditures that are central office related and yeah. your shares yeah. going down. Um, you had asked about uh, materials. Um, we don't typically see an increase in those lines on the budget. Those lines carry over year to year for materials. Um, they are typically fully spent down. You had asked, I think, also about zeroing out a budget if it's unspent. That doesn't usually happen. And we're talking about small amounts. So it might be $1,000 for the science department for the entire high school. So they're using that. They're, they're buying what they need to there. Um, there are other requests throughout the year that do come in. Those are funneled through the curriculum office, and generally there are grant monies available, whether it's from title grants or, you know, we look at our revolving funds to fund those requests above and beyond the budget as the year goes on, but we don't generally increase, um, you know, the supplies and materials. It remains pretty consistent. They have to replace consumables and things like that every year, yeah. so um, well, there's no big know, change there. In, in regards to, you know, how this budget sheet is laid out again, as you go through it, 
and you check on and you're looking at you know the increases and the decreases and you know the the whys and back of it and when you hit the um the material section and there's no increase there's no increase right down the line and then you start to say now if i'm just um you know joe america on the street and i look at this what 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 i'm seeing is all all our money is going to salaries administration and special needs but when it comes to materials for the average kid in our average school there's no increases that's what that's that's how it presents now that may not be the case but my expectation is that our school committee is digging into this is going into each of these departments is understanding what the english teacher needs what what the stem people need and they are turning that upside down see that's 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 my expectation. I mean, that may not be the case, but if I was on a school committee, it'd be very uncomfortable. I can assure you. Um, and I would be asking all the right questions at the wrong time. Uh, but so if you tell me that during the course of a year, instructors, teachers, classroom teachers can get what they want in materials to teach their subjects, then I'll take your word for it. Yeah. So, oh, go ahead, Darius. Yeah, so Paul, they can. And, and so the, the problem is where the those line items within the budget by department, um, when you because you had the you had the workbook there, so you can see that by line item. So basically we that is the full that that money goes directly to the department chair's authority to how to spend it. And so it, it is not for every single thing that happens in the classroom. Okay, for example, you know, today, um, you know, we're using more, more software and more computers than ever. That's not including any of that. You know, we've asked for an increase in software line item this year because that's what's happening is a lot more things are labs. That, let's say we're talking about science. Labs are occurring using software. They're di dissectionally using software instead of, you know, frogs from our, from our yeah. day. You know what I mean? Um, those kind of things. We also use other monies. There's a, there, there's a textbook line item, as you can we can find in there that it hasn't changed in many years, but that money gets moved around as well for supplies. It's textbooks and those kind of supplies additionally. It's not just books anymore. So we're not using books in the same way that you know, it was used you know, 20 years ago. So there are other things. And then there's grant money. Um, you may have saw on the paper that we, you know, Stacy Chapley in our science department got a large grant to do a whole innovative um, you know, lab science, interactive lab science, where they give us thousands of dollars, more than our budget line worth of lab equipment. So we are subsidizing um, those lines using other parts of the budget. Um, and each year is a little bit different. So, so yes, I want to say that those are those lines enough. No, we, you know, ideally you'd like to give the teachers more, but that's not an area where you can easily add to when we're trying to keep a budget conservative in the areas where we can control. Because you're absolutely right. The area we don't control as easily is salaries. The salaries keep going up because you have colas and you have, you know, the world getting more expensive, and we have to, you know, keep our employees um, you know, paid to keep up. So. So yeah, so I hear what you're saying, um, but I, we're in good shape there, and that's that's the kind of the overall why we haven't really touched those line items. I'm sure those department heads are watching. Would say we'd like you to increase them at some point, and maybe we'll look at that at some point. But you're doing okay. Okay, well that's good. That's good to know. But you can understand from the pedestrian view of this budget when you see so many zeros coming down, you have to. You have to ask that question. Oh, it's a fair question to ask. I'm glad you asked it. It's hard to have that kind of transparency with a budget. You know, I mean, Frontier's budget is what, $12 million? You know, the amount of line items, the amount of how it's broken up, um, and where are the, you know, it's, you have to have the conversation. You know? Yeah. Um, right. Okay. Um, Shelly, you answered just about everything else that I had on here, except the tuition to non public. Can you? Can you tell me what that is? Yeah, so any student that's placed out of district goes to either a collaborative or a private school. Some of them go to other public schools um, that we can't meet their needs here, but we pay a tuition for them to go. So um, next year we're slated to have 12 students out of district. 
Um, so that cost pays for their education, which we are required to pay for. Okay. Well, do you know how much that is, Shelly, on those 12 individuals so they would know if it's not too hard? It's no, no, I just have to get to the right tab. It's on the bottom. $30,000. Yeah, and then if you look at the two lines below it also, um, the 90, is it 93 and 9,400 accounts, that also accounts for- um, Right, that's the one. Placements. So those are pretty significant. We spend, we're gonna spend between those three line items for out of district placements, almost a million dollars. So to not, that goes to non-public schools. Right. So collaboratives, private schools. Um, we do have a couple of kids that go to the um, the technical school, the Franklin County Technical School. What is their program called, Darius, where they prep okay. kids basically for? Yep. And you got me thinking I can't think of it. <laughs> um, so it's almost a million dollars that we spend in out-of-district placements for Frontier. And that doesn't even count transportation costs, which are through the roof. Um, for special education. Yep. Um, so the one other thing I'll comment on, Paul, just because you brought it up, how the majority of, of the budget is salaries, you're absolutely right. You know, we're at about 54% at Frontier is salaries and wages, and about almost 40% of that is for educational teaching staff, IAs, teachers, um, you know, so it is carrying the majority of our funding through salaries, yep. and wages, which is why we don't increase a lot of the other lines um, because we know we have to try to balance the budget somewhere. Yep. <laughs> Shelly, on that number of a million, was that including charter schools too? No. So just to let you guys know, we do bring in a fair amount of school choice to Frontier Regional because we have programs. We do have programs for our kids. Some come in for the sports. Some come in to get a good education because their school may not offer it. But you got to remember, if we're paying out over a million plus, we're bringing in, we're bringing in a million plus to take care of that through school choice. That's a big. That's a when you're talking numbers, that's a big number. Right, but don't get confused on that. So right. that's a different. That's a different number. So we don't even see yeah. the money the way they the, the money ever comes into us. We don't. They don't give us a bill, then we pay it back out. They just never give us the money. So they they run out. Who's coming? You know, just like the town's paying out for choice going out as well. The just yeah. frontier district has to as well. The problem that we have, and it's a big funding formula issue, is that we can for every school choice child we bring in, it takes four to pay for a charter school going out. Because our assessment's around twenty thousand dollars for each child that goes to a, to us to a high school charter school, we have to get four school choice ones coming in. So Frontier does okay because the amount of choice that we have, we're able yeah. to kind of it's almost a wash. We come out a little bit ahead um, when when our numbers are a little bit high. Um, but I know our, our our neighboring towns and districts are getting absolutely throttled by that by that comparison that. You know, you can build a good program, but you got to take four kids to match one going to a different program. But that's not that's out of our control. It's just something yeah. to, you know to complain about. So let's see. Mm -hmm. Is the world we live in? You know. But, um, okay. Thank you, Brian. You had your hand up. Yeah. Um, so if, if enrollment's driving this, which 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 it sounds like a lot of it is. Uh, Darius or Shelley, if you had a crystal ball, is the is a significant decrease in Deerfield enrollment? Is that is that number sort of a, an outlier or is that a trend? I don't know if you have a sense of enrollment numbers for the sixth grade and fifth grade. And so, Brian, you bring up an excellent question regarding that. So, we are looking at um, trends that the number is going to go down again next year uh, for Frontier, and then possibly again. There's a bump here, then it goes down again um, a couple years out. Those numbers could change. We're seeing, you know, we had a lot of, you know, COVID did have an effect on, on um, population and population movement and families and a lot of homeschooling. That those kids may be, we may see coming back at the end of the school year, at the beginning of the next school year. Um, so we may see adjustments, but administratively looking at the front, you now just looking through the frontier lens, you may see reductions next year 
um, because of the size of this. It's hard to go year to year if we're up 20, down 20. We are seeing a significant drop that, you know, we were at 650. We're getting closer to the 600 marker now uh, with Frontier. You know, we're right about 610 right now. Following next year, we might fall below 600, um, depending on if the you know population adjustments, that kind of stuff. So we are already starting to make adjustments in our middle school and by shifting um, teachers and whatnot. And so we may have to do reducing the staffing to meet the population changes. We are looking at it. I try not to do it year to year. Like oh, you're up one, you know, cutting because that's very hard to. You know, basically you have your you know, your core teachers, and if you start cutting your your extras, everything's connected. So if, if we start if we start dropping programs, then we get less choice. We get less choice. We start getting less funds. We got to drop more programs. So it's a balancing act because you know we are very you know I know Bob started with lead of sports, but really a lot of kids come to us because the amount of AP offerings that we have compared to other Franklin County schools, you know the amount of you know electives that we have that that are you know, for college bound students that are you know that are very interesting, um, and that we're constantly changing them and keeping the students interested in mind. So. If we start removing those, we start reducing, you know, it's one of those things where someone says, get rid of all the school of choice. That'd be a much smaller school. It'd be a lot cheaper. Well, they, 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 it's a fact, but at the same time, you have to play the game of, well, then we'd lose students. They would drive south, right? They would start going to the larger schools around us for the more offerings. And that would drive us to be even smaller, paying out more, but still having to keep the fundamentals what's here. So it is a balancing act of how much do we take in? And we, you know, people saying you're footing the bill for some of those other towns, but at the same time, we're making an attractive school for our own citizens, our own, you know, community. So it is a, it, it's a balancing act. And you're seeing some of the smaller schools around us, as soon as you get behind, and I'm not gonna name you by name, because that'd be me, but they're getting behind all of a sudden they can't keep some of their core students from and then it starts to affect then it starts going into athletics all of a sudden they don't have a varsity blank program um you know in or they don't have a uh they don't have multiple play productions in the year for those kids so those kids start going elsewhere so it is it's a tricky balance of the two and we are keep we are keeping an eye on it and it's good to ask questions about it um but next year i think if we don't see an increase in staff, uh, not staffing, we don't see an increase in students, you're going to see we're going to have to reduce some positions in the school to meet that demand, um, the smaller population. Um, so that's kind of what I that's kind of what I see, and it, and it is Deerfield has a small has a very small class coming through. We went through a three person class to a two person um, grade level. Yeah. Paul, you have any other questions or any of the other committee members have any questions for us before we close the public hearing? I'm all set. I want to thank you again for doing this. I realize how often you have to do this and uh, it's appreciated. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. At this time, we're going to at this time, we're going to close the public hearing. On the proposed FY23 budget for, for Waitley Elementary. And I know we threw a frontier in here too to try to give you guys an overview of that too. So, yeah. Okay. Thank um, you. Brian, are we done? We're done. All right. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful evening. You too. Good night. Okay. Thank Go you. Sox. Okay. Good night. Thank you all. Thanks. See ya. Tell me it on your on your roll call. Uh, yeah, he got oh, you, Brian. Yeah, I, was, I started out on the phone. I started out on the phone muted, but right. Okay. All right. So we're done. Thank you. See you guys. Thank okay. You. How about a, we can uh, Beth? How about approving the minutes from February eighth? Yes, I will make a motion to approve those minutes. Okay, and I'll second it. Roll call, Beth. Yes. Bob, yes. Shelly, uh, you want to talk to us about the financial statement, please? I did send you over the reports. I don't have anything new uh, to, to give you feedback on. Um, I know Chrissy and I had a conversation today about some things in the building that we might be looking to find some funding for, but I think it's all things that we can manage without having any budgetary issues. Um, and then 10 warrants were reviewed and signed electronically, totaling $35,303.99. Uh, 
Um, and if you do have specific questions about the reports I sent, I'm happy to answer them for you. Thank you. Thanks, Shelley. Chris, do you have a principal's report for us? Yep, it's brief because February is a short month, so I don't have a, a whole lot that was that was going on. Um, we'll be having a spring session of Girls on the Run for girls in grades three through six. That'll begin March 23rd. So anyone um, with a, a daughter who would like to participate, they should register. Um, our fourth, fifth, and sixth grade students went on a field trip, which in a normal year isn't really such big news, but it, it's it's pretty big news over the last two years. Um, they went to see the movie The Tiger Rising, which is an adaptation of a book that's read each year in fourth grade. Um, kids had a great time, and I wanted to thank the PTO for subsidizing that. Um, I'm working with Mrs. Carr, our instrumental music teacher, and Mrs. Meyer, our art teacher, to plan a modified version of the Arts Night, which was an annual event prior to COVID. We're hoping to hold it in early May. More details will be forthcoming. And lastly, the Waitley grades five, six basketball team finished the season with an undefeated record. Congratulations to the players and the coaches. Well, congrats. That's great. Chrissy, I just had one question. Is there um, still music class happening at the school? There is not. While we continue to search for a music teacher, um, Mrs. Meyer, the art teacher, has taken on a second day. Okay, cool. So that there's still arts happening um, with the goal of getting a music teacher in place for the next school year. If, if we found one next week, we could put her in there or him in there right away. Um, but I didn't want to keep having a substitute teacher in that position. Um, not that the, I would, I will say also the substitute that comes to our building uh, most days did a phenomenal job with what we have going, but I'm, I'm not terribly great at planning music lessons. <laughs> um, so it, this just feels better. And having an arts night coming up, this gives Mrs. Meyer some extra time with the kids to work on sort of some long-term projects with the kids. So it's kind of a, a win all around. Great. Anyone knows of a music teacher or someone who might be interested, please speak up. Bob? Bob? Not me. I'm not a music person. Nope. <laughs> I listen. I just listen to it. A one day a week position. Perfect for someone who's retired. Oh, God. <laughs> I'll look for somebody for you. Thanks for report. Um, I don't know of any public comment. I only see six of us on, so I'm going to say there's no public comment. Darius, you want to give us a COVID-19 update, please? Well, I mean, we already had our exciting meeting a week. Um, however, um, we did two weeks of pool testing, and uh, pool testing this week was completely clean. Um, you know, our, our case numbers really have dropped like a stone. Um, they, you know, that was kind of what they were projecting, but we wanted to see it before transitioning over. So those looking at that, we had one from our pool last week, um, one case from pool testing last week, none this week. Um, I think you're seeing it's still out there. You know, there's still, it's still poking around, but it's nothing where it was. It's really is dropping down, which is great. Thank you. And we already voted on the budget, uh, April meeting discussion. Just a reminder that our April meeting is a joint meeting. Um, we will be going over um, calendar, PD proposals. Um, Romney Associates will give an update on our anti-racism and equity work um, from their from their um, viewpoint. And you know, just so just FYI, it's going to be. A, it also, we're trying to do a hybrid in-person remote at the same time for those who just want to get together, and we'll also try to. I'll be working on figuring out how we're going to do that, but it is time that we start coming back together. Why I picked the joint meeting to do that, I don't know, but we'll try. Um, we'll figure out a section of the library and, and make it happen. Yeah, that was my next question. If it was going to be a 
hopefully an in-person, you know, hybrid like you were talking right. about. They did extend it to July. They being the governor extended the, you have to have a virtual component to all in-person meetings until July. So, you know, I think that, you know, you guys can decide how you want to do Waitley in May, but I suggest we get together um, and people can join us. Um, you know, I know we can do it at Frontier without a problem. I'll talk with Chrissy if she's got a smart board. You have a smart, uh, whatever you call it. Yeah, I see nodding yes. Yeah, we, we we'll figure it out in Waitley. We can figure it out in the library. Great. Perfect, thanks. Um, I have nothing, and I think Maureen's a collaborative, and it just comes down to Darius. If you have anything extra, nothing extra. Next month will be a big superintendent. To all this, all, we're doing a lot of planning for summer PD calendar things, and, and kind of at the same time, we're right now starting to do interviewing for um, the new early uh, not early child um, campus position. The uh, uh, early childhood curriculum coordinator. Curriculum coordinator. Thank you. Beth. <laughs> She's been gone so long. I forgot what she did. <laughs> no, uh, curriculum coordinator. And we're, you know, you know, principals have picked up a lot of that slack this in the last few months. And so, you know, um, yeah, we're getting there. So there'll be a lot going on next month. <clears throat> and just to let Beth know, we did end up with negotiations the other day and we're just waiting for them to vote on it, but we did come to an agreement with the IAs and the teachers. We just, we're just waiting for them to vote before we vote it in as, as a new, a new, um, new union contract. So just to let you know. Thank you. Um, Shelly, Darius, uh, thank you very much. It was, it was a tough night and um, just Shelly, you did a great job. Thank you very much. And I'll make a motion to adjourn. I will second that. All in favor, raise your hand. Yes. Good night, everybody. Have a great night.